Welcome to another episode of Boot Camp for Combat by Compass Games and Ross Mortel. I'm Cliff, aka We Beasties, and in this episode, I want to consider line of sight determination. Line of sight is sort of what got me thinking about starting a boot camp series to begin with. I've noticed that a lot of people playing online mess up a bit when they're dealing with line of sight while well, in the heat of in the heat of battle it's easy to do line of sight is kind of complex and not very well explained in my opinion in the combat series if you're coming at this from a lot of other tactical war games it's probably intuitive how to approach line of sight but if you're a new gamer and you've come into combat thinking, hey, this is a great tactical war game, but you don't have a lot of experience playing things like Advanced Squad Leader or Panzer Blitz or some of the old war school war games, um, it might be confusing. In the rule book, there are examples given that aren't really explained. They're more or less implied a lot of times. <clears throat> so I've sat down and thought for a while about how to best encapsulate all these rules into a simple format. When I'm teaching at the university, I've found it's best not to inundate my students with a lot of specific examples that you're trying to create a larger framework from because you lose the forest for the trees. Instead, it's better to find a general rule, an axiom, to explain and then show how specific cases arise from that axiom, how to apply a general rule to specific cases. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I've tried to summarize the line of sight rules as are explained in the various rule books and all of the discussions and the forums on Board Game Geek into a relatively simple formula. Just reduce this all down to a formula that you can apply to any situation that might arise in combat. And I've created a relatively simple flowchart to walk you through lines of sight determinations. After a while, this will become intuitive and you won't need any of these props. But in the process of learning, I think they might be useful, particularly for newer players. So I just want to walk through it. I've created a line of sight tutorial on Board Game Geek before I even began this bootcamp series, and I'm going to provide a link to it in this unit. It's like a five page PDF document. It goes into some detail covering the math but it's sometimes easier just to listen to somebody explain it and demonstrate it on a map live. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. Before we begin, we must define a few terms. The first is the difference between concealment and cover. Cover are things that stop bullets and concealment prevents the opponent from viewing you or you from viewing the opponent but does not necessarily stop bullets. It's possible to have one and not the other but most often they go together. So let's see. I say so much too much. I've discovered listening to my videos. It's annoying. Sorry. An example of concealment without cover. Shadows. So you're deep in the dark shadows and you've got your face paint on and you blend in and you're hard to see. That is concealment, but shadows are not going to stop bullets. So that is not cover. It is, I suppose, theoretically possible to have cover without concealment. If you were hiding behind, let's say, six inches of Lexan glass, you could be seen through the bulletproof glass but the bullets can't get through it to you. That's not very practical, but it is an example. Most often you're gonna get concealment and cover together. You're hiding behind a brick wall. The brick wall prevents you from being seen, that is concealment, and it stops bullets, that's cover. So why am I talking about this? In line of sight, cover doesn't matter. Concealment is the name of the game. We are asking 
does the terrain that intervenes between the shooting soldier and the target soldier. Does that intervening terrain block view? Does it conceal? Cover is dealt with separately. It's not factored into line of sight. Cover comes into effect when we modify our weapon skill off of the weapon skill table, what we'll talk about when we talk about shooting. And it modifies your TQ value when you're trying to spot. So that's cover. Line of sight is just concealment. Next, we have the terms level, size, and height, which when I first read through the rule book, I kind of glossed over it and I didn't really understand what was going on and I got kind of confused for a moment. So let's go through the differences. Level, as we talked about in terrain, there are four main levels in combat volume one. Level zero is the base level like hex 3206. They're usually green in color in volume one. Volume two's artwork looks different and I covered that in terrain. Level one hills are light tan like 3107. Level 2 hills are medium tan, like 30.07. And level 3 hills are dark brown, like 2908. So we have our four levels. Levels matter when we're comparing soldiers that are firing and defending. We care about what level they're at. We don't care about the terrain that they're in. Do they have cover or not? Does not matter. What matters is their level and their level alone. We want to first and foremost know, are their two levels the same or are they different? Because that's going to matter. Now size is defined in the terrain table that we talked about in an earlier episode. Each object has a certain vertical extension. Trees have a size of one. Rocks have a size of one half. Logs have a size of one half. Um, walls have a size of one half. Buildings usually have a size of one, except for the abbey in volume two that seems to have a size of two. So we have sizes, we have levels. Heights are the sum of the two. So for instance, in hex 3110 here, we have rocks on a level one hill. Level one plus size of one half gives us a height of one and one half. At 2606, we have a size one tree on a level three hill, which gives us a height of four. It's just simple math, nothing too complicated. Height is what we care about in our intervening hexes. We were gonna be com comparing the height of the intervening terrain to the levels that the soldiers are on. It does not matter about the size of the terrain that the soldiers are in. So for our examples, we're gonna have Private Connor and Soldat Lang chase each other around some various maps. It'll be fun, why not? They're fairly evenly matched. So they're running around. It does not matter if, let's say, Connor's in a size one tree, it does not matter. And Lang is in a open hex. They're both at the same level, level zero. All right, so the, ter the terrain that they're in is not important. What we're going to be then comparing is the two levels of the soldiers. So in my flow chart, we have yellow boxes. Those are where you're gonna make determinations. You're going to look at stuff. In orange boxes, you're going to make decisions that feed out. And in a blue box, we might have to do a calculation. So the very first thing we have to do is determine the levels for the two soldiers involved in a spotting attempt or a firing attempt. What are their two levels? And we ask, are the two levels equal? The simplest answer is yes, they're at the same level. If they're equal, then we go over and we ask, are their levels greater than or equal to the intervening hex's height? 
So let's make it really easy and just go over here in the green. Both soldiers are at level zero. All intervening hexes are at level zero. So their height, their level is equal to the intervening heights. Therefore, the LOS is clear and they can spot and they can shoot at each other. And that's really intuitive. It is a little less intuitive as you get around these maps. Let's say that Soldat Lang is here and Connor's here. Now the intervening level is zero and they're at level one. It's actually less than them. So they're greater than the intervening height and they can see each other. Okay, that's fine. How about if I put them, well, let's see, I'm looking for a good spot on my map. I want level ones to shoot across here to here. Let's draw that line of sight. It's going through those trees. The trees have a size of one. They're at level zero, so they have a height of one. Lang and Connor have a level of one. Therefore, their levels are equal to the height of the intervening ta terrain, and we have a clear line of sight. We can shoot over the tree. We can spot over the tree. Some people mess that up. And it doesn't matter what terrain they're in. Now, if the intervening terrain is greater than their various levels, then it's going to be blocking. So if I put Lang here and Connor here, they're both at level one. The rocks in between them are size one half, level one, so they have a height of one and a half. One and a half is greater than one, therefore this line of sight is blocked. So when the two heights are equal, it's fairly simple. If the intervening terrain is greater than their levels, it blocks. And if it's not greater, it's open. It gets a little more fun when the two levels are not equal. So when they are not equal, we have to consider height advantage. The upper soldier, the taller of the two soldiers, must be taller than the intervening terrain in order to see over it. So before we begin into all of that, let's talk about continuous slope for a sec because it's simple. When we go from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0 and there's no break in this continuous decrease, we have a monotonic decrease in elevation. Nice and smooth, one drop each hex. This is a continuous slope. Continuous slopes never block line of sight as long as there's no other terrain complicating the issue. If there was like rocks or something here that would intervene and create a problem. But here we have open terrain, continuous slope. This is an open line of sight. So if the two soldiers have a different level, so we ask, is level one equal to level two? No. Okay, fine. Then we'll define the taller one as T for taller and the shorter one as S for shorter. And now we compare to the highest intervening hex. The soldier that is higher must have a height, a level that is higher than the height of the intervening terrain. So if I put Charlie at 2908, and Lang out here at 3312. Now our line of sight is going down through those rocks. The level of Connor is 3. The level of Lang is 0. 
the first thing we ask is, is the height of the highest intervening terrain, which would be the rocks at 3110, level 1, size 0.5, is 1.5. Is that height greater than Connor? Connor's 3. No. So we go down and we ask, okay, is the shorter one higher than those rocks? Well, 0 is not greater than 1.5. So that is no. And then we're going to have to go on to define blind hexes. But before we go there, I want to go to some of the instances where we say yes to these questions. So if I bump down to level 2, yeah, i got to get that off. Turn that off. Level 2 is still greater than 1.5, so we still have a height advantage. But if I go down to level 1, 1 1.5, is not shorter than 1. So I go to is the height greater than or equal to t. t is 1, height is 1 and a half. Height is greater than or equal to t, therefore this line of sight is blocked. We can't see through those rocks down. Now, even if it was equal. Let's go here, and we're shooting here. Now Connor, as he's trying to trace his line of sight, is at level 1, going down to level 0. He's taller. Our intervening hex is 3106, also level 1. This is equal to the level of Connor and will block down. And it's also possible to consider situations where, let's say, Connor is here. Oh, let's turn that off. Connor's here at 2708 at level 3. And Lang here is at level 2, 2606. And in between, we have this tree. Well, we've got Connor at level 3. He's got a height advantage over this tree because this tree is level 1, size 1, that's height of 2. So he can see over that, because the height is not greater than the taller. Now we ask, is the shorter greater than or equal to the height? Well, the shorter here is at level 2, and that's equal to these, this height 2 tree. So we can see him, because he's able to look from level 3 over the tree, to the level 2 hill. So now we've covered the basics where we've done the simple stuff where they're at the same height or if there's intervening terrain that doesn't block and doesn't really create a blind hex. Blind hexes is where it gets a little bit interesting. Here we're doing just a smidge of geometry, but I've simplified it. We're not going to actually do any geometry or trig here. We're just going to compare the difference of the shorter of the two um, levels to the height versus the difference between the taller of the two individuals and the height, that ratio. We're going to have that ratio, and then we have to factor in the distance of the intervening terrain that's potentially blocking from the taller of the two. And that's going to determine the number of blind hexes. So you basically have height minus s divided by taller minus height, t minus h, plus d, and d is a constant depending upon the distance that the intervening terrain is, the furthest one, from the taller of the two in increments of five hexes. So zero to five hexes is d would be zero, six to 10 is one, 11 to 15 is two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Usually you don't get all past much 15. People just don't shoot that far very often. So let's consider some of these cases. So let's say that Connor's 
oh, let's say here, 2906, firing at Lang, and let's put Lang here at 3303. Can he see him? Well, Connor has a height advantage over this level one hill. The two levels are different. So first question, are the levels the same? No. Second question, is the height of the terrain greater than the taller? No, one is not greater than two. Then we go to the next question, is shorter greater than or equal to the height? No, because zero is not greater than one. So now we have to ask, are there any blind hexes generated? And if so, how many are generated by the intervening terrain? The intervening terrain in this case is that level one hill at 3203. So we take the shorter and the height. So the height minus the shorter, one minus zero is one, divided by the difference between these two, two, minus one is one. So we have one over one, which is one. And our D value for a distance of one, two, three, four is zero. So there'd be one blind hex. A blind hex is like a shadow that the intervening terrain creates that we cannot see into. It's the defilade that you can, defilade that you can hide behind. So we've got this shadow, this visual shadow, and in this case, Lang is in it and will be out of LOS. If he was back one hex, here, the shadow would be here in 3303, but he would be visible in 3402. It is really no more complicated than that. All we have to do is consider these questions and how many blind hexes we create. Here's a case that most people wouldn't get, I think. Here is Charlie at 2909 at a level two hex. And here is Lang at 3311. With my math, we don't have a shot at Lang. I don't know how he got a reload order. I don't want that either. That's the deck. Let's just remove that. All right. Here we have level two, level zero, not equal. Next question, is the height greater than the taller? Definitely not, because this is one and a half, which is less than two. Is shorter greater? No, zero is not greater than one and a half. Now let's determine the blind hexes. Well, it's the shorter, right? And the height, one and a half minus zero is one and a half, divided by the difference here, two minus a half, one and a half is one, is one half. Yeah, I can do math. Two minus one and one half is one half. So we have a one and a half divided by a half, which is three. There should be three blind hexes created by this because we don't have very much clearance. We've got a little bit of a height advantage, but only 0.5. And that because it's dropping down quite a bit, that shadow is going to extend out quite a bit. He'd have to be all the way back here before we'd really be able to see him. Those rocks are creating quite a blind area that the Germans could move up to that hill on. All right, let's move on to some other considerations. Conditional height. There is some terrain that it matters what posture you're in if it's going to provide any concealment or not. And logs are one of them. Logs have a height of one half but if you have a regular command, like here we got Connor shooting across at Lang, got logs in between at one half, they're only going to block LOS if you've got a Sherry command, sneak, hide, rally, or reload. If these guys both have like an evade, this is not blocking. 
because they're both standing upright and though the logs are one half, we can see each other's torsos over the logs. It is only when we put like a sneak onto this guy. Well, let's see here. I suppose that would be like here. Now he's sneaking. Now he's down on his hands and knees crawling or he's prone sneaking around that log and the one half log now will block LOS. That'll be true if either of them is sneaking, hiding, rally, or reloading. Other short terrain includes tall grass. So let me look around here. I see some tall grass trying to get a good line of sight across it. So if we put them like this, now they're having to sight across that long grass. Yeah, this would be blocked because of the sneak command. Eh, stop it. If I, though, take this sneak command off and I put on an evade, now it's not blocking. And lastly, we've got depression hexes to consider. And there are no depression hexes to speak of on this map. So I'm going to bop down to a different map. I'm not going to save that. I'm going to go here, and I hope that I still see this on my video. These streams are depression. And we got Connor and Lang still playing together. If Connor is in the stream and Lang is out here in the grass and they both have an evade command, that is not going to block line of sight. That depression doesn't matter if you've got anything but a sherry command, sneak, hide, rally, reload. If th these guys were instead sneaking, they would now be out of LOS. Now, that wouldn't be true if Lang was right next door. If Lang is adjacent, he can look down into that depression, and it doesn't matter if you have a Sherry command at that point. And he could still be seen. If he's back one hex, he would have to be up one level to have a line of sight. If he's back two hexes, he would have to be up two levels to see down into that depression. The other way he could be seen in that depression is if Lang was over here looking down this stream through multiple contiguous depression hexes. Now you have a free clear line of sight down this whole stream. You put a machine gun up here and this stream is a very unhealthy place to be. I think that is most of what I want to talk about. No, not quite. The one that crosses most people up in videos, almost missed it myself here, are fields. Fields are even more tricky because, well, they're sherry commands, sneak, hide, rally, reload, because they're going to be short terrain, low terrain. They're only low terrain in certain seasons. Fields, like this field up here, let's say we're sneaking back here in this hedge and we've got uh, laying up here in the wall. The field is intervening low terrain. In June, July, and August, when the crops are mature, they block with a sherry command. So these are low terrain and will block just like a log or tall grass but only in June, July, and August when the crops are ripe and growing. And frankly, where I live, June, not so much. Around here, the corn, you're lucky if it's knee-high by the 4th of July. Even alfalfa crops in June, I mean, you're just up to first cutting. They're maybe 24 inches tall, I guess, if you were prone. But maybe Normandy is better than western Michigan for growing? I don't know doesn't matter. June, July, August, the crops are mature and they will be low terrain. And if you have a sherry command, sneak, hide, rally, reload, this will be blocked. doesn't matter what season it is if I take this off and I put an evade on there or a sprint. 
any of these commands where you're standing up, you're going to be able to be seen in the crop, well, through the crops to that bocage or hedgerow, depending on what scenario you're playing. A lot of people forget fields. A lot of people forget fields. It's easy to forget because you got to remember what month you're in. You got to remember what posture you're in. Yeah, it's a lot to remember. Those are the basics. I'm hoping that this flowchart makes it easier. Um, give me some feedback. Let me know if I can make it simpler or if I've missed things or if I've messed things up here. I just want to make the game more fun. Basically, if you're having fun, you're playing the game fine. This is a solo game. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to explain the rules as best as I can. I hope you have a good time, and I will talk to you guys next time.